A Naxal or Naxalite is a member of any political organization that claims the legacy of the Communist Party of India Marxist-Leninist, founded in Calcutta in 1969. Communist Party of India Maoist is the largest existing political group in that lineage today in India. The term Naxal derives from the name of the village Naxalbari in West Bengal, where the Naxalite peasant revolt took place in 1967. Naxalites are considered far-left radical communists, supportive of Mao Zedong's political ideology. Their origin can be traced to the split in 1967 of the Communist Party of India Marxist following the Naxalbari peasant uprising, leading to the formation of the Communist Party of India Marxist-Leninist two years later. Initially, the movement had its epicenter in West Bengal. In later years, it spread into less developed areas of rural southern and eastern India, such as Chhattisgarh, Odisha, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana through the activities of underground groups like the Communist Party of India Maoist. Some Naxalite groups have become legal organizations participating in parliamentary elections, such as the Communist Party of India Marxist-Leninist Liberation and the Communist Party of India Marxist-Leninist Janashakti. As of April 2018, the areas where Naxalites are most visible are Andhra Pradesh, Visakhapatnam, Bihar, Aurangabad, Gaya, Jamui, Lakhizarai, Chhattisgarh, Bastar, Bijapur, Dantawada, Kankar, Khandagayan, Narayanpur, Rajnangon, Sukma, Jharkhand, Bikara, Chatra, Garwa, Garidi, Gumla, Hazaraba, Kunti, Latahar, Loherdega, Palamu, Ranchi, Simdega West, Singbam, Maharashtra, Gadchiroli, Odisha, Koraput, Malkangiri, Telangana, Badradri, Kothagudam History The term Naxalites comes from Naxalbari, a small village in West Bengal, where a section of the Communist Party of India Marxist CPIM led by Charu Majumdar, Kanu Sanyal, and Jingao Santhal initiated an uprising in 1967. On 18 May 1967, the Siliguri Kashan Sabha, of which Jingao was the president, declared their support for the movement initiated by Kanu Sanyal, and their readiness to adopt armed struggle to redistribute land to the landless. The following week, a sharecropper near Naxalbari village was attacked by the landlord's men over a land dispute. On 24 May, when a police team arrived to arrest the peasant leaders, it was ambushed by a group of tribals led by Jingao Santhal, and a police inspector was killed in a hail of arrows. This event encouraged many Santhal tribals and other poor people to join the movement and to start attacking local landlords. These conflicts go back to the failure to implement the fifth and sixth schedules of the Constitution of India. In theory these schedules provide for a limited form of tribal autonomy with regard to exploiting natural resources on their lands, e.g. pharmaceutical and mining, and land sealing laws, limiting the land to be possessed by landlords and distribution of excess land to landless farmers and labourers. Mao Zedong provided ideological leadership for the Naxalbari movement, advocating that Indian peasants and lower class tribals overthrow the government of the upper classes by force. A large number of urban elites were also attracted to the ideology, which spread through Charu Majumdar's writings, particularly the historic eight documents which formed the basis of Naxalite ideology. Using people's courts, similar to those established by Mao, Naxalites try opponents and execute with axes or knives, beat, or permanently exile them. At the time, the leaders of this revolt were members of the CPIM, which joined a coalition government in West Bengal just a few months back. Leaders like Land Minister Hare Krishna Koner had been until recently, "...trumpeting revolutionary rhetoric, suggesting that militant confiscation of land was integral to the party's program." However, now that they were in power, CPI -M did not approve of the armed uprising, and all the leaders and a number of Calcutta sympathizers were expelled from the party. Subsequently, in November 1967, this group, led by Sushital Ray Chowdhury, organized the All India Coordination Committee of Communist Revolutionaries Violent uprisings were organized in several parts of the country. On the 22nd of April 1969, Lenin's birthday, the AICCCR gave birth to the Communist Party of India Marxist-Leninist CPI-ML. Practically all Naxalite groups trace their origin to the CPI ML. A separate offshoot from the beginning was the Maoist Communist Center, which evolved out of the Dakshin Desh group. 
The MCC later fused with the People's War Group to form the Communist Party of India Maoist. .A third offshoot was that of the Andhra Revolutionary Communists, mainly represented by the UCCRI ML, following the mass line legacy of T. Nagi Reddy, which broke with the AICCCR at an early stage. The early 1970s saw the spread of Naxalism to almost every state in India, barring Western India. During the 1970s, the movement was fragmented into disputing factions. By 1980, it was estimated that around 30 Naxalite groups were active, with a combined membership of 30,000. Contention was over the development of minerals and raw materials in the area, and development of a paved road to transport them, along with the order the road brought. If the government could construct a road, the rebels would have lost, if the rebels could continue thwarting road development, the government would have lost. Violence in West Bengal Around 1971 the Naxalites gained a strong presence among the radical sections of the student movement in Calcutta. Students left school to join the Naxalites. Majumdar, to entice more students into his organization, declared that revolutionary warfare was to take place not only in the rural areas as before, but now everywhere and spontaneously. Thus Majumdar declared an annihilation line, a dictum that Naxalites should assassinate individual class enemies, such as landlords, businessmen, university teachers, police officers, politicians of the right and left, and others. The chief minister, Siddhartha Shankar Ray of the Congress Party, instituted strong countermeasures against the Naxalites. The West Bengal police fought back to stop the Naxalites. The House of Soman Mitra, the Congress MLA of Silda, was allegedly turned into a torture chamber where Naxals were incarcerated illegally by police and the Congress cadres. CPIM cadres were also involved in the state terror. After suffering losses and facing the public rejection of Majumdar's annihilation line, the Naxalites alleged human rights violations by the West Bengal police, who responded that the state was effectively fighting a civil war and that democratic pleasantries had no place in a war, especially when the opponent did not fight within the norms of democracy and civility. Large sections of the Naxal movement began to question Majumdar's leadership. In 1971 the CPI ML was split, as Satyanarayan Singh revolted against Majumdar's leadership. In 1972 Majumdar was arrested by the police and died in Alipur jail presumably as a result of torture. His death accelerated the fragmentation of the movement. <laughs> Operation Steeplechase In July 1971, Indira Gandhi took advantage of President's rule to mobilize the Indian Army against the Naxalites and launched a colossal combined army and police counter-insurgency operation, termed, Operation Steeplechase, killing hundreds of Naxalites and imprisoning more than 20,000 suspects and cadres, including senior leaders. The paramilitary forces and a brigade of para-commandos also participated in Operation Steeplechase. The operation was choreographed in October 1969, and Lieutenant General J.F.R. Jacob was enjoined by Govind Narain, the Home Secretary of India, that, there should be no publicity and no records, and Jacob's request to receive the orders in writing was also denied by Sam Manekshaw. <laughs> situation during 2000-2011 Between 2002 and 2006, over 3,000 people had been killed in Naxalite government conflicts, and by 2009, the conflict had displaced 350,000 members of tribal groups from their ancestral lands. In 2006, India's intelligence agency, the Research and Analysis Wing, estimated that 20,000 armed cadre Naxalites were operating in addition to 50,000 regular cadres. Their growing influence prompted Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh to declare them to be the most serious internal threat to India's national security. Naxalites, and other anti-government militants, are often referred to as ultras. In February 2009, the Indian central government announced a new nationwide initiative, to be called the Integrated Action Plan. IAP for broad, coordinated operations aimed at dealing with the Naxalite problem in all affected states namely Karnataka, Chhattisgarh, Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Maharashtra, Jharkhand, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, and West Bengal. 
Importantly, this plan included funding for grassroots economic development projects in Naxalite affected areas, as well as increased special police funding for better containment and reduction of Naxalite influence in these areas. In 2009, Naxalites were active across approximately 180 districts in 10 states of India. In August 2010, after the first full year of implementation of the national IAP program, Karnataka was removed from the list of Naxalite affected states. In July 2011, the number of Naxalite affected areas was reduced to 83 districts in nine states including 20 additional districts. In December 2011, the national government reported that the number of Naxalite related deaths and injuries nationwide had gone down by nearly 50% from 2010 levels. Maoist communist groups claimed responsibility for 123 deaths in 2013, which was nearly half of all deaths from terrorism in India. The movement is described as terrorist by the Indian authorities but it is however popular in the regions where it is present. According to a study of the newspaper The Times of India 58% of people surveyed in the state of Andhra Pradesh, had a positive perception of the guerrillas, 19% against them. In a 2004 Indian Home Ministry estimate, their numbers were placed at that time at 9,300 hardcore underground cadre holding around 6,500 regular weapons beside a large number of unlicensed country-made arms." In 2006, according to Judith Vidal Hall, "...figures in that year put the strength of the movement at 15,000, and claim the guerrillas control an estimated one-fifth of India's forests, as well as being active in 160 of the country's 604 administrative districts." India's research and analysis wing believed in 2006 that 20,000 Naxals were involved in the growing insurgency. Topic: <laughs> Situation post 2010. The 6th of April, Naxalites launched the most deadly assault in the history of the Naxalite movement by killing 76 security personnel. The attack was launched by up to 1,000 Naxalites in a well-planned attack, killing an estimated 76 CRPF personnel in two separate ambushes and wounding 50 others, in the remote jungles of Chhattisgarh's Dantawada district in eastern, central India. The 17th of May, Naxals blew up a bus on Dantada Sukma Road in Chhattisgarh, killing 15 policemen and 20 civilians. In the third major attack by Naxals on 29 June, at least 26 personnel of the CRPF were killed in Narayanpur district of Chhattisgarh. Despite the 2010 Chhattisgarh ambushes, the most recent central government campaign to contain and reduce the militant Naxalite presence appears to be having some success. States such as Madhya Pradesh have reported significant reduction in Naxalite activities as a result of their use of IAP funds for rural development within their states. The recent success in containing violence may be due to a combination of more state presence, but also due to the recent introduction of social security schemes, such as Narega. 2011 Late 2011, Kishenji, the military leader of Communist Party of India Maoist, was killed in an encounter with the Joint Operation Forces, which was a huge blow to the Naxalite movement in eastern India. March, Maoist rebels kidnapped two Italians in the eastern Indian state of Odisha, the first time Westerners were abducted there. The 27th of March, 12 CRPF personnel were killed on in a landmine blast triggered by suspected Naxalites in Gadchiroli district of Maharashtra. Topic 2013. The 25th of May 2013, Naxalites attacked a rally led by the Indian National Congress in Sukma village in Bastar Chhattisgarh, killing about 29 people. They killed senior party leader Mahendra Karma and Nand Kumar Patel and his son while in the attack another senior party leader Vidya Sharan Shukla was severely wounded and later succumbed to death due to his injuries. The 11th of June. See, 2013 Maoist attack in Darba Valley. Topic 2014. The 11th of March 2014, Naxalites in Chhattisgarh ambushed a security team, killing 15 personnel, 11 of whom were from the CRPF. A civilian was also killed. The 1st of December 2014, Monday, killed 14 CRPF personnel and 12 injured in South Chhattisgarh's Sukma district. 
Topic. 2015. The 11th of April 2015 to 7 Special Task Force (STF) personnel were killed in a Maoist ambush near Kankerlanka, Sukma, Asterisk Chhattisgarh, 74. The 12th of April 2015 to 1 BSF Jawan was killed in a Maoist attack near Bande, Kanker, Chhattisgarh, 75. The 13th of April 2015 to 5 Chhattisgarh Armed Force (CAF) Jawans were killed in a Maoist ambush near Karandal, Dantawada, Chhattisgarh, 76. Topic: 2016. The 24th of October 2016 to 24 Naxalites were killed by Andhra Pradesh Greyhounds forces in encounter that took place in the cutoff area of remote Chitrakonda on Andhra Odisha border. In November 2016, three Naxalites were killed near Karulai in an encounter with Kerala police. Naxalite leader Kapu Devaraj from Andhra Pradesh is included in the list of killed in the incident. Late November, in Jharkhand, six Naxals were killed in a gun battle with Central Reserve Police Force CRPF commandos. The CRPF recovered 600 bullets of various caliber, about 12 IEDs, an INSAS rifle, an SLR, a carbine and three other guns. 2017 The 24th of April 2017, in the 2017 Edelbeda attack, 25 CRPF officers were killed in encounter with 300 Naxals. The encounter with 74 battalion of CRPF was reported from Kala Pathar near Chintagufa in Sukma district of Chhattisgarh. Topic 2018. The 13th of March 2018 to 2018 Sukma attack 9 CRPF personnel were killed and 2 injured after a powerful IED blast that destroyed their mine protected vehicle in Sukma, Chhattisgarh. The 22nd of March 2018 at least 37 Naxalites were killed by police in a 4 hour gun battle on the border between Maharashtra and Chhattisgarh. Topic: <laughs> Causes According to Maoist sympathizers, the Indian constitution ratified colonial policy and made the state custodian of tribal homelands, turning tribal populations into squatters on their own land and denied them their traditional rights to forest produce. These Naxalite conflicts began in the late 1960s with the prolonged failure of the Indian government to implement constitutional reforms to provide for limited tribal autonomy with respect to natural resources on their lands, e.g. pharmaceutical and mining, as well as pass land sealing laws, limiting the land to be possessed by landlords and distribution of excess land to landless farmers and labourers. In scheduled tribes street areas, disputes related to illegal alienation of saint land to non-tribal people, still common, gave rise to the Naxalite movement. See also References Further reading Urban Naxals by Vivek Agnohotri, publisher, Garuda Precaution Naxalite Politics in India, by J. C. Johari, Institute of Constitutional and Parliamentary Studies, New Delhi. Published by Research Publications, 1972. The Naxalite Movement, by B. Dasgupta, 1974. The Naxalite Movement, a Maoist Experiment, by Sankar Ghosh. Published by Firma K. L. Mukhopadhyay, 1975. ISBN 0-88386-568-8. The Naxalite Movement in India, Origin and Failure of the Maoist Revolutionary Strategy in West Bengal, 1967-1971, by Suhil Jawade. Published by Associated Pub. House, 1979. In the Wake of Naxalbari, A History of the Naxalite Movement in India, by Sumanta Banerjee. Published by Subarnarika, 1980. Edward Diker Tribal Guerrillas, The Sintals of West Bengal and the Naxalite Movement, Oxford University Press, New Delhi, 1987, p. 201, SBN 19-561938-2 The Naxalite Movement in India, by Prakash Singh. 
published by Rupa, 1995. ISBN 81-7167-294-9. V. R. Raghavan ed. The Naxal Threat, Causes, State Responses and Consequences, Publisher VIJ Books India Private Limited, ISBN 978-93-80177-77-9. Mary Tyler 1977. My Years in an Indian Prison. London, Victor Gollinch Ltd. OCLC 3273743 External links Status paper on the Naxalite problem, South Asia Terrorism Portal West Bengal, districts affected by Naxalite violence, South Asia Terrorism Portal Articles and research reports on Naxalite violence in India and Pakistan History of Naxalism. Hindustan Times, the 15th of December 2005. Archived from the original on the 8th of February 2011.